Welcome to Lawline with your host, David Schnerman, an accomplished entrepreneur, attorney, and legal educator. Each week, Lawline will bring you the most knowledgeable experts in the field of law, business, and education. And now we introduce our guest and our host, David Schnerman. Welcome to Lawline. The organic food market has become a multi-billion dollar industry. Today we'll look closer at what being organic means, the industry oversights, and the benefits of consumers going organic. Our guests are Jean Halloran, Director of the Policy Initiatives of the Yonkers Consumer Union, and Kate Mendenhall, Executive Director of Northeast Farming Associate of New York. Hello, Jean. Hello, Kate. Hi. Organic food, definitely a hot topic. Um, Kate, in 1990, uh, we found statistics. Uh, there was a billion dollar industry. Uh, now you comment in 2009, it's a $25 billion industry. Mm -hmm. Where, why is there so much growth? What do you attribute to it? Well, um, consumers have become more um, aware of, I think, what we were eating and with the rise of obesity, people are paying attention to health. Um, there's much more organic food on the market, so it's easier to find, whereas 10 years ago, it was in, you could find it in specialty stores or at some farmer's markets, but now it's um, through many shopping channels. Um, so it's much more common and easy for people to find, and they want it. Gene, what is this saying, you know, more than the fact that it's more common, is this saying something overall about where the food industry is today, that the organic side is growing so fast? Well, I think there is a, a huge amount more consumer interest in having uh, healthier food, having local food. We're starting to worry about global warming and think about how far our food has to come to us. And I think, uh, uh, actually, um, Monsanto gave a good boost to the organic industry when they introduced their drug uh, bovine growth hormone and farmers started using this hormone on their cows to boost milk production and a lot of people really decided that th this was kind of where they got off in terms of of industrial agriculture and they decided that they just wanted uh, regular milk. Well, it, it's funny you say that because I have two kids uh, who are young and we buy organic milk. Yeah. Um, and so yes, that is the most prevalent part of organic in my daily life. The flip side is the milk is three times the price of regular milk. Um, so we buy it because it says no, no hormones and that's not good. Um, I guess just the question to that is why is it so expensive? If this is just, orga if it's organic is regular, you know, Kate, do you think these prices are, are the right price point for things like milk. Well, if you know dairy farmers, dairy farming is a really hard industry, and um, organic farmers are able to make a living wage. So the milk is priced more at a at a price point that is able to support the dairy farming industry. Um, or the organic market is much different than the conventional milk market, and so they're able to really support their families um, that way. It's a it is a, a little bit more labor intensive, um, so that plays into it. There's more intensive pasture management involved with the organic. Um, homeopathic remedies are expensive. What, yes, do, you, what does you, it mean to be organic? I mean, you, yeah. can't, uh, you can't use antibiotics mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be antibiotic free. And if you, you know, a, a, a commercial um, uh, dairy farm can have 3,000 cows in one barn mm -hmm. and those cows never see the light of day. They never go outside. Uh, and, you know, th they'll have a picture of the cow out in the pasture, but th that's, that's the only place that, I, that that happens. But in organic, they have to have access to the out of doors. So the, the, the bigger question is, and, and to me, who's somebody who buys organic um, mm -hmm. and goes to farmer, farmer's market, markets, I guess my question is, I don't know if I'm following just what people are telling me to do because that's what it is, or is there a problem in the food industry? Is there an overall problem in the food industry, or is this just a new trend that's breaking out? You know, what's your, you know, is there a problem in the food industry, Kate? Yes. <laughs> okay. Our food, what is the problem? Our food system needs a lot of help. And organic farming, I think, is a really good way, to, of, and it's a good model for a system that's working. Um, what's, the big, what's the help that it needs? The chemicals being put into it? 
Well, I think um, one of the big problems is the increased use of pesticides. Um, genetically engineered crops were put on the market, marketed that they were going to reduce herbicide use, but actually the contrary has happened. There's more herbicides used on these genetically engineered crops. Organic farmers do not use any synthetic inputs. They rely on ecological principles, so they really help healing the earth. Um, which will make it a place where um, our farmers' children can continue to farm generations going forward. So organic food does not include pesticide residues like conventional food does, and that makes it healthier for, for our kids and So if uh, or, organic food, when, if it's not using pesticides, mm -hmm. it does it, you, what does it do that's different? How can, do we, is the goal to change the rest of the food industry so we can you know, have a more sustainable food industry or, or is it just to have the organic part because there will always be pesticides being used? Well, I hope that there aren't pesticides being used in the future. Um, we do a lot of education to our farmers and help them learn a ways to transition and to organic methods and that means that whether we're helping conventional farmers learn how to use fewer pesticides or for conventional farmers to transition to organic, um, we do both of that. Pesticides are really detrimental to our waterways, to the soil, and to ourselves when we eat them. So um, NOFA New York and groups like us are helping more farms to farm organically, and that would be the way, I think, of the future. Okay, uh, Jean, who do you think the market is uh, for organic? Is it somebody who is looking for the environment, somebody who's looking to eat healthy? Because when I think to myself, I'm not sure which way, uh, why I buy organic. Is there a certain market that it makes more sense to target it towards? Well, all of the above. Um, but I would say that uh, mothers of small children are probably more concerned about the quality of their food than anybody else, and for good reason. Uh, you know, what you feed your kids when, when they're little, I mean, all the studies of cancer, you know, show that, that it takes, you know, 20 or 30 years to develop, the, the little kids' brains are developing. Um, you know, it's a very vulnerable age, and, uh, and it's very important to uh, do right by them in that period. You mentioned Monsanto's in the beginning of the show. Um, the documentary, um, Food Inc., gets into the corn industry a little bit and mm -hmm. how it's subsidized. Can you, can you tell our viewers a little bit about what is going on in, with the corn and the subsidy and how that's affecting what we eat? Well, it's it's um, it's it's kind of complicated business. I mean, <laughs> the the we have a system in this country where we actually subsidize the price of major commodities uh, like corn and soybeans. So the market is really not determining how much they produce or what the price is. They're getting taxpayer uh, uh, money that that goes into that. Now, both of those crops Why? are are it's something that was established in the depression. And it's now become very deeply entrenched. Uh, and the people who get the subsidies use some of their subsidies to uh, pay for the election campaigns of their congressmen, who then give them the subsidies again. OK, so they subsidize corn. Yes. Which makes so it our, cheaper. Our tax dollars are subsidizing corn, subsidizing soybeans, the, the major commodity crops. Most of those crops are going to feed uh, beef and and pork, uh, our our main food stuff, our main meat mm -hmm. uh, crops. So, uh, on the good side for consumers, it does hold down those prices, uh, but it does mean that that there's a huge amount of money, including taxpayer money, in those industries, and and it's. Uh, it, it's hard for the ordinary consumer to have an impact on that market. But is that unhealthy? So there's there's a lot of money there, so it's it's cheaper. So what is the problem with it? Is it making the food more unhealthy? And why is organic is. the answer? Well, one of the one of the results is that uh, corn. Um, it's extremely cheap to make high fructose corn syrup. We have the sweetener that costs that almost. You see on every ingredient that you, you purchase. Mm -hmm. Right and. And uh, you know there's inordinate amounts of it in soda in particular, and this is one of our you know if those things were more expensive, just as when it got more expensive to buy cigarettes, people smoked less. If it was more expensive to buy soda, and a lot of people would have a problem with that, um, and who might find you know be very unhappy. Still, uh, I think we would have less obesity, uh, and particularly for children, you don't want to encourage those kinds of bad habits. So one of the main issues is, is if you get rid of a subsidy, which 
supports that type of, of uh, economy and building the, the, the products a certain way, that would lead to a different way of doing things. Yes, it would, absolutely. And until that's there, potentially organic is the answer to the people who don't want to be in the mainstream. Does that sound about right? Yes, although I think organic might eventually become the mainstream. Uh, it's certainly going there uh, quickly. Uh, we, I was just looking at a poll that showed that I believe 40% of Americans do buy some organic food at some point during the year. So it's still a small part of the market, but it's there in you know, almost half our households. That's a, that's a great transition, Kate, because when I go to the supermarket now or Whole Foods or anywhere, you see organic, organic, organic everywhere. Um, so the question is, what are you, when you go to the supermarket and you're buying organic, what is it, like what products are organic? What does that even mean when there's so many different types of products that can be organic? Um, How do you define that? Well, anything that's labeled organic um, is certified organic, so it goes through a USDA accredited certification agency. Um, NOFA New York has a certification agency that certifies most of the operations in New York State. We now certify over 600 farms and processors. So that, that means that the farmers or food processors have to go through a very rigorous set of regulations that are um, set by the National Organic Program, which is run out of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Is any product pretty much have organic uh point to it because I see it from not only products but hair care items and paint. Um, yeah. How many different items well, are using organic? F fish are not certified in um, the U.S. and then beauty products are one that are quite controversial. Yes, uh, consumers, uh, consumers Union and Consumer Reports have uh, actually been quite upset about the use of the word organic on cosmetics because it's essentially meaningless. Uh, it, there is no uh, definition of what it means to have an organic uh, hair <laughs> shampoo and uh, we think that it's just a way to get consumers money without really giving them anything in return. Unlike organic food where you have to comply with 600 pages of regulations mm -hmm. as to how it's grown in a natural and environmentally sound way. Now of course in, in every system, there's companies that are trying to cheat the system. Um, how is, ha, have you seen any bad apples and um, how, how is that being done in terms of using the brand organic to try to sell, just like you said, on a hair care product? Right. Because certainly a couple bad apples can ruin it for the rest of everybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, like any industry that grows, there are companies who want to get in on um, a new emerging market and that has happened somewhat inorganic, but um, we do have watchdogs making sure that what is organic is organic and following the same integrity and Consumers Union is a great um, champion for for that in the US. What's the Leafy Green Marketing Initiative? The Leafy Green Marketing Agreement is a new initiative passed by the or proposed by the USDA which was introduced by grower groups, um, handler industries in um, mostly in western US that that handle large-scale leafy green, so salad mixes, um, spinach. It really rose out of the spinach scare um, a few years ago in putting forth national metrics for food safety across the whole country. It's something that we really feel strongly against at NOFA New York. We feel it um, unfairly puts small producers against um, very large companies selling leafy greens. So so basically it's saying that a small producer has to show certain guidelines that they're they're going through when they're marketing when they're marketing the product it would go ahead well it it uh, sets I mean food safety standards are a good thing mm -hmm. um, and the leaf the leafy green marketing agreement does include some good standards like you have to test your irrigation water and you know you should have porta potties in the field um, but we have a problem with it because it's being done exclusively by the processors, the people who put the spinach in the bags. And it's not done, it hasn't been, these criteria haven't been established in an open and public way, bringing in scientific expertise and consumer expertise and organic expertise. And out in California, where they have already one of these things in place, there was a lot of criticism that they were that they were going 
uh, way too far uh, in terms of trying to assure food safety, that they were worried about having any wild animals whatsoever in a field. Now, wild animals can carry diseases, but most don't. So, you know, you don't have to get rid of every chipmunk. And, and they were, there were, you know, some criticisms that some growers were requiring basically um, sort of desert dead zones around uh, fields. So I want to get back into the food industry as a whole because um, we, we talked about food inks, we talk about um, what you think is the future of the food industry going more organic. Um, stores like Whole Foods, uh, they're becoming bigger and bigger and every, it looks like every main uh, supermarket there's a whole section dedicated to organic foods. Why do you think it's going to keep growing? Well, I think... Uh, and not just be a fad like the fat food fad or the low carbs, which I don't hear about anymore. I just right. hear organic. Well, this has been going on, oh, for a couple of decades now that, that organic has been growing. It's been a quite, quite steady. Um, and, you know, it hasn't been one of these things that, uh, that just gets picked up and dropped. And I think it's uh, because of uh, a couple of things. Um, you know, we do, uh, we are thinking about the planet uh, a lot more awareness. A lot more awareness Documentaries. on... Documentaries. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, people are, uh, you know, we, we went through a phase of introduction of supermarkets. Uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that all foods were produced on local farms. And right. then we had supermarkets and mass production, and that brought costs down. Absolutely. And now people yeah. are realizing that they're paying a price in quality. Uh, yeah. It's exactly it. We're going to go to break right now, but it's... What you said is, it seems like what was in the past is what we're trying to get back to. And so it's kind of where, where are we at now and really how bad is it for us? Um, and so we can determine how to get to the future of, of the food supply because certainly is it sustainable to kind of keep doing what we're doing or is organic a necessary means to the future? Uh, you're watching Law Line. Hope you're enjoying the conversation about organic. We're going to talk about the future of the industry. Stay with us. Doctors say it's hard telling their patients that they've lost their sight to glaucoma, when with regular eye exams and medication, it could have been treated. Once sight is lost to glaucoma, it can't be restored. Researchers are working on a cure, the only hope for millions at risk for glaucoma. Protect your sight. Call 1-800-437-2423 for a free brochure from National Glaucoma Research. I feel my job is extremely important and knowing that you've helped people out on the ground, the firefighters in particular. Just the fact that they see us up there making an effort gives them a lot of comfort. In my civilian job, I fly people from point A to point B, but in the Air Force Reserve, I get to save lives. I'm Major Mark Stewart, and very proud to be a member of the Air Force Reserve. Hi, you're watching Lawline. We're talking about the organic food industry. Our guests are Gene Halloran and Kate Mendehall. Before the break, we're talking about the future of the organic food industry. What I want to talk about is how we educate more people in terms of getting to the next steps. Um, we talked about what happened in, in food inc and documentaries. Where do you see us getting to the broader consumer? Um, is the, the market right now, Kate, more the affluent? Uh, individual, you said the moms with with kids. How do we get to everybody in the population so it's more than a movement? It's it's the future. Um, the organic industry actually isn't just an affluent market. Um, it's mostly moms across economic okay. um, spectrum that are choosing to look for organic food. But you raise a good point, and that food access is an issue. I think that we all need to deal with as members of the food system and making sure that organic food is accessible to everyone is a big part of NOFA New York's mission and we have a food justice project that we're working on. There's a lot of really great marketing models out there that can help make that possible like community supported agriculture which offers organic produce at a very affordable price for consumers. Um, and so there's alternative markets out there and it's a balance between making sure that farming remains a viable career for farmers, for family farmers, and that consumers can access 
healthy G food. Jean, cost yeah. is a big part of this. You know, we talked about how there's subsidies in, in the corn area. When you talk about organic and milk, how expensive it is, how can we bring the cost down? Well, one thing is that as organic grows, its costs are going to come down, you know, because part of it is just economies of scale. Should we be su subsidizing the organic market? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, if it's either you subsidize everyone or you subsidize nobody, but we shouldn't be subsidizing mass production industrial agriculture and leaving organic to fend for itself. Uh, or we always will have to spend uh, more for organic. And I guess it's a matter of supply versus demand. If, if consumers are demanding healthier foods or organic foods, it would lead to more, more products being made that way. Right. Well, one of the things that I th really uh, thought was an important advance was when they started to allow food stamps to be used at farmers markets because uh, that provided an opportunity for uh, low-income people to buy healthy food. I mean, that's just, that's just one important step. And farmers markets in general, uh, they're terrific here in New York. And, a lot of character. And they're, and they're growing uh, by leaps and bounds. And as I understand it, there's now uh, more demand than there are uh, farmers to supply. Well, so. Certainly, if you walk by any farmers market on the weekends, there's, they're packed. Yeah. And they, they, most places sell out. Uh, an another uh, issue in terms of food is genetically modified foods. Um, and you, you look to, you go to the supermarket now and you see perfect tomatoes. You see everything looks great and you don't know if it's genetically modified or if it's cloned or if it's natural or organic. Um, w what is your opinion on, on the, the future and the health of using you know, GMOs? Well, we have a consumer's union a lot of questions about uh, GMOs and we really think that it should be labeled so that ordinary consumers can decide for themselves whether they want to participate in this experiment uh, on, their, on their food supply. Um, it, genetic engineering means that, it, that you start to cross things that can't be crossed in nature. You can take genes from a flounder and put it into a strawberry. That's, that's something that doesn't happen in nature. It's not natural plant breeding. And you can have unexpected effects. You could have allergy effects, uh, uh, toxic natural toxins that, that were inhibited before could become expressed. So uh, at the very least, we think there should be labeling, and we think there should be mandatory uh, safety assessment, which we don't have. So if there's no labeling, is, is there any way to do studies on effects of what it is to eat a, a GMO type? tomato versus uh, organic tomato? Well, I, I should say, uh, GMO tomatoes, although they were introduced, are not on the market They're today. They're not on the market anymore. That's what they I were, have in my mind. I remember they were, seeing They that. were not a success. Really? Yes. They didn't taste as good. They didn't taste very good. Um, and they were trying to uh, charge a premium for the seeds. Uh, but we do have uh, genetically engineered um, uh, corn, soybeans, uh, canola, papaya, uh, actually. And um, uh, it, you, you will not know, uh, because you don't know if you're eating them, we really don't have any good information on how they might be affecting people. And 40% of the corn um, on the marketplace is genetically mod modified and 80% of the soy. So pretty much in any processed product that you're purchasing that's not organic, there's a likelihood that it has some genetic content. Now, is there a difference between corn being genetically modified or you take 20 or 30 years of maybe you don't do it through the lab but of, of creating corn so it's a certain type and it, it's all yellow and it's all it produces much more in, in detail as, as they say in Food Inc. Is that the same thing to you as being genetically modified or You're talking specific? about traditional plant breeding? Correct. No, they're very different. Traditional plant breeding um, has been going on for centuries and it takes it speeds it, it up. It modifies over years. Yes, and it's, you can do it in a lab in a process that speeds up the natural process that could happen um, in nature and with some manipulation. But it's not genes from a different species in two. How do farmers uh, deal with the, the things where Monsanto has genetically modified uh, seeds? How do they not use those seeds now? From, from what I understand, it's almost impossible to have your own seeds. And is there a, a fight to kind of get that back? Yes, there, I mean, there's a really big fight going on in our whole food supply between 
industrial agriculture and small-scale sustainable agriculture. And you know, the industrial model is is um, monocultures, acres and acres of the same thing. Sure. Put put the pesticides on, put the put the the fertilizer on. You know, tens of thousands of of animals, all the same, packed into a feedlot. Um, you know, huge quantities with huge environmental impact. Um, and and the opposite is, uh, uh, which which is very well portrayed in the movie Food, Inc., I have to say, is... And you have a starring role in it. I a five-second role. No, I, don't, I actually don't have a speaking part, but I appear for at least 10 seconds. <laughs> so the if, if we had to sum this up, we have one minute left. Uh, Kate, what, what would be your hope uh, for the next five, 10 years uh, in the food industry? Um, I think for organic to continue to grow, for consumers to support their local organic farmers, um, and for more farmers to take the initiative to learn about organic practices, and for the USDA to continue to support farmers transitioning into organic. And Jean, if you had to go for one specific thing that you'd be looking for as a change? Labeling of genetically engineered food. <laughs> How far away are we from that? Um, until we have some change in Congress, unfortunately, we're too far. We need more power, we need more voices. Well, I appreciate you both coming on the show and sharing your opinions. Kate, thank you very much. Jane, thank you. Right. And I want to thank everybody for watching and learning a little bit about the organic industry. And I definitely recommend watching the, the documentaries Food Inc. And mm -hmm. you can watch Jean for her five second cameo. <laughs> thank you again, and we'll see you next week. You've been watching Law Line with your host, David Schnurman. Mr. Schnurman will be back with you next week at the same time. If you have any questions about this week's program, please send an email to info at lawline.com.